In this video, we'll be creating the back of a playing card, like a face card. So this is the back pattern for a playing card. We're using free and open source software Inkscape to draw this. And this is also vector art. So the first thing we're going to do is using the rectangle tool, we're going to left click and hold and draw a rectangle. And then we want to give it a rounded corner. So we'll click on this little white circle, left click and hold, and this will drag, we can drag it down and create a rounded corner for each of the corners. Using the select tool now, we'll right click and go duplicate. So we have two of these red rectangles. We'll turn the top one white. And then if we hold the shift key, we can resize the top and bottom, the left and right while holding the shift to make this a little bit smaller. Right click duplicate again, because we wanna create an outline. Um, we can also do this using the stroke feature in Inkscape, but this way uh, it gives us a little bit more control. And so now we have uh, the red card with this white outline. The next thing we'll do is using the circle tool, we want to left click and hold and create a circle that's going to be the center. And I'm gonna hold down the control key to make it uniform in the X and Y axis. We'll change the color to white, left click and drag it to the center of the card, or at least roughly to the center. And then selecting this square and the circle, um, shift select, we can go to align and distribute. And then relative to the last selected object, we're going to center uh, vertically and horizontally so that this circle is right in the center of the card. Then we'll grab the paths tool, this Bezier curve tool, we'll left click a point to create a straight line. And then we'll go to the fill and stroke settings to increase the stroke width. Um, we can do this a couple of different ways, but we'll just turn this up so that we have a stroke width with this particular document. Um, this is in millimeters, roughly 1.5. If we go to the stroke paint, we can change the color. So we want to grab this dropper tool and choose the same color as the back of the card. And now we'll select this, right click and go duplicate. And then holding the control key, we'll move it over to the right so it stays on the same axis. Um, we're, going to, we're going to be creating a pattern here. So selecting both of these, we can go path, combine. And that'll come make these one uniform uh, path and then we'll go path, path effects. And we're gonna be using the path effect to create this pattern. So we're going to add a new path effect. And the one that we want to choose is this interpolate subpaths. And then we can choose how many interpolations we want to have. So we'll put up a whole bunch here. Um, we can do as many as you want to, um, wherever you think it looks good. We'll stop here at 31. And then we want to go to ungroup. And then we want to go to path, stroke to path. And that makes all of these strokes a path. Then we'll go to path union. So it's all one unified path. And then we can move it all together. We'll duplicate this again. And then we'll rotate it so that we have this kind of hash pattern. And then selecting both, we can go path union again. So now we have one complete path of this hash pattern. We'll rotate it. And then we want to cut out just the part for the card. So to do that, we can duplicate this background part of the card. We'll bring it over here. We can center it along our new hash pattern. We can scale up this hash pattern just a little bit. And then selecting both, we can go to path intersection. And now we have just this hash pattern created uh, of just the size that we want, of the, the outline of the card. If we turn the hash pattern to a white color, we can then center it on the card and we see we have the hash pattern placed on the card. You may need to watch that over again. There's a, little, a lot of steps involved in that, and there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, if we lower it down, we just want it to be underneath the white circle. So it appears white right now. We just want to make sure it's down under that white circle. We'll adjust the hash pattern just a little bit in here, just to give it a little bit of a, some padding, like a margin in here between the, the sides. And then we can right click and go duplicate on this circle. And we'll make this a little bit inset. Again, you can do this using the stroke, uh, the stroke tool as well on the circle, uh, but this gives us a little bit more control, especially because we're going to be creating another pattern inside of this circle. So we're gonna be using another path effect for the inside of the circle here. First we'll create, we'll go to the circle tool and we'll draw a new pattern or the, the, the base of our new pattern. Um, so we're gonna go change the fill on this to none and we'll change the stroke, we'll give it a stroke. 
So we can enable that clicking here. And that creates a stroke on the outside of this circle. And we want the stroke to be the same color of this red that we've been doing all along. And then we can adjust the stroke width under stroke style. And we'll drag this over roughly to the center. We'll place it right here because what we're going to want to do is have this oval uh, around pattern around this whole circle. So rather than drawing each one individually, uh, we're just going to go to this path object or, uh, path strokes to path so that we have a path that we're working with. Because when you first draw a circle, it's a it's a stroke, it's an object technically. And then we're going to go to path path effects. You have to have a path before you can apply a path effect. That's why we have to do that conversion. We'll add the path effect, and this one we want to do rotate copies. So this is kind of cool. We can change a lot of different settings here um, for this object that we've drawn, and then we go number of copies to create a really cool pattern out of just that single oval. So we want to lock this. You can hold the shift key also just so that we can resize it without um, kind of squishing it. So to resize proportionally on the X and Y axis, we'll center it uh, inside this circle. And that's it. We, at, at any time, if we want, we can still go into this path effects and make changes to create sort of different types of patterns for the back of this card. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any. And I look forward to catching you in the next video.